comments, make questions, or uh, share information of interest on the public policy forum, or also on discussions we have had previously. Let me remind you that there are microphones in the room, and for those of you who are following us remotely, you have the Q&A button, or also you can raise your hand with the icon on the bottom of the screen. So we have now 30 minutes for open mic. So we have simultaneous interpretation. And now Jordi is already queuing up at the microphone. Well, this is something that I already commented with the chairs on Monday. I also commented this with several persons from the community. According to the policy development process, there is a possibility of requesting the creation of a work group. There is a previous experience that we had at APNIC. The staff told us that there were many items in the manual that were somehow not clear or were duplicated. Prior to that, I did a full review of the policy manual of APNIC, and they told me it was better to do so in a working group. And I'm proposing to do the same thing here. Today, I have revised 80% of the manuals over the past two years, I have done so. I don't wish to mention any names, but I have already contacted five persons. And if I'm not mistaken, you have to ask for this in the list. So I think the chairs will have no inconvenience if we are, have already five persons to create a task force. So we're cre uh, requesting you to create a working group or a task force to revise the policy manual. So we're going to analyze that, and based on what we see in the PDP, we'll then continue with your proposal. Any further comments, any further questions regarding the PDP general, the policy manual? This is a moment to ask your questions. Anything in the Zoom? Franco? So, yes? I thought he was going to speak. Fernando. All right, Thomas. Thomas Lynch, ex chair. Thank you, Marcela, for being seated up there. And, Marcela, great job. Thank you, Thomas. Fernando, one of the topics that I wanted to approach here, and this has to do with the policy development process and maybe something that is somehow getting lost and we have to pay attention to this. I would like to invite all of you to pay attention to that point when we start discussing policies. And this is the approximate consensus issue. So when we discuss a proposal, when we analyze the merits of the proposal, the point is those who are against state the problems that that proposal might generate and how this will be solved. And the person who submits a proposal will try to solve the problem. Now, simply put, that is the rationale of the approximate cons consensus. So when a reason is explained against the proposal that is not so much linked to the proposal, has nothing at all to do with the proposal, that could not be considered an unresolved objection. So it is important to focus on the proposal as such, on the merits, and to state with technical, legal, or administrative arguments or whatever, which are the types of issues that prevent the approval of that proposal. So I would like to pay attention to that point, to focus on what is contained in this proposal. If, if you are against the proposal, to highlight those problems that 
might arise. I'm not going into other philosophical proposals that have nothing to do with the proposal. So the point is figuring out solutions to the problems. The obligation of the authors is to find a solution to the objections or problems. And if this is not related to the problem, to the proposal, this, there's nothing to be dissolved. Hello, I'm Douglas, and I would like to refer exactly to the same point. It's not because if you are against a proposal, this is not done on technical grounds, but this does not mean that we're not opposing these. There are some situations where opposing a proposal is based on other issues. Maybe there is a paragraph, this is not a paragraph, it might not be a legal point, but the context, I might disagree with your opinion, and that is all. Now, if I disagree, and if Carlos's opinion or Frediani's opinion or Hartmut's opinion, if I disagree with them and I explain why I disagree, and even with philosophical grounds, well, this is something that has to be considered. So the general consensus is accepting what all the others say and being conservative about changes. I think someone mentioned that yesterday or today, I don't quite recall. So if I say I'm not pleased with the changes, then this leads to dissensus, so I disagree. The, it's precisely that's precisely the point. Disagreeing with something, you're entitled to do so when you're voting. When you vote, well, this is not voting. This is just trying to obtain consensus. Then you have to identify what the issue is that has to be solved, because you are entitled to vote in an assembly. And you, you vote, and that is it. Now, when we are working on the basis of a consensus system, then you do have to justify your support. And what we always say here is that it is not correct to be against a proposal just because you don't like it. That shouldn't be taken into account in the discussion because you have to justify your position. I said, I'm sorry, but I stated my argument. You don't agree with me, but let us speak about the elephant and the colors. I said, well, I spoke about leasing IPs and adjusting that policy will pose a problem at the next policy forums. You might not agree, but I'm stating my own opinion, and that is it. You might disagree with my argument, but my, the arguments exist. And the point is that if there's no consensus, then it is dissensus. So it will either go in one direction or the other. So we said in previous occasions that this is a wide discussion and that there should be no technical irrefutable reasons. And there's an RFC that states this. So if there is a discrepancy, of course, nobody will be in favor of another person. Each person is entitled to have different points of view. So we understand that this is quite a difficult process, particularly for now. That is why you should all participate. So if you wish to continue discussion, if there are any further comments, Yes, Wesley, go ahead. I'm Wesley Correa from Telephone IP Solutions. Today's forum was most productive, and I have a comment that I'd like to make, and this is a personal point of view regarding how often topics are dealt with, particularly in the discussion list. Initially, before the forum, we had a presentation made by Carmen Dennis, who's spoke about the tone of the 
comments made in the public policy forum. Now, personally, I'm aware and I'm sure that there are different ways of guiding a topic. But as sure as I am of that, I'm also sure that not all are the best ways. Maybe from 10 ways of saying something, just one or two are the correct way to state things. So instead of using harsher words, this makes us like be in a position like that inconvenient neighbor. We are aware that we might have neighbors that are not so pleasant, who have parties until late hours of the morning. And in our physical community, we don't like to have neighbors such as those. And in the same way, we don't like to Ha as, as we don't like to have neighbors like those in the physical community, we don't like to have neighbors like those in the LACNE community. I am sure that in our community we have brilliant minds. But you might have a brilliant mind if you don't know how to place an argument on given topics. And maybe if this is a debate, it has to be a healthy debate with ideas but with no personal comments. In the previous discussion, I tried to discuss things, and I felt that I wouldn't be adding anything. Maybe I joined the discussion, and I will be attacked. So in the same way, I think other people might perceive something similar. So let me make this as a reflection. <coughs> the chairs we have are donating their times. Sometimes time they would otherwise dedicate to their families, and they are there working in a very important role for our community. So at least the chairs who are on the other side have to count on the respect from our side on the work they carry out. So we should really have a healthy conversation, a healthy interaction and discussion so the community as a whole can then evolve. Otherwise, no one else will wish to be a chair. Who would like to be uh, beaten all the time? So if we have a community who can, that can evolve, if we want to be a community that is an example to other communities, and if we also wish to have an example for our members, we have to do our work as citizens of this community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wesley. Thank you. So we now would like to ask if anyone else has any comments or questions. The microphone is open. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Joan Damais. One of the problems that I have in my company, and maybe others might have something like this, is asymmetrical interaction. The discussion list by email is something where this happens. So what I suggest is whether we can have online meetings on those issues, maybe on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis. This would be great in order to avoid situations such as these, things that I experience on a daily basis. So maybe this is also experienced in the discussion list. Thank you, just that. Thank you for your comments. I understand that the PDP states that the proposals have to be made in the discussion list and then presented at the forum. There we have an example. I apologize. What is your name? Did you say? Zhuang. You mentioned an idea, and that is why we have the policy development process. Maybe you can submit a proposal and make this as a different way of communicating or discussing a policy. Well, that would be welcome. Maybe even 
if there are other people in the community who are willing to help, if you never submitted a proposal, this is quite a simple process, but sometimes you need a little support. I think there are several people in the community who would be willing to lend your hand if you wish to submit a proposal, adding one further way to discuss the proposals. So thank you for your contribution. So if there are no further comments, now we close the Public Policy Forum, LACNIC 40. We'd like to thank the authors. We'd like to thank LACNIC staff and those who participated in the list and in the questions and answers online. So we'll continue interacting in the mailing list to continue discussing the pending topics. Thank you very much to all of you.